Great. Well, thank you very much. That's a great pleasure to be here. So um, I guess the goal of my talk today is to share some thoughts on the seemingly right way to think about correlations of general multiplicative functions bounded. And uh, well, so the object is the multiplicative function, so completely multiplicative. And here the drive and sort of conjecture that has had like, um, which has been popularized recently and before is the conjecture of Chola, which comes from 65, which says that the correlations of the Liouville function, if you take your favorite Liouville function, which is minus one to the number of prime factors, then the all correlation vanishes. So if you take all the linear shifts, then this thing and the correlation match. So I, uh, I, don't, I don't think that I need to explain to sort of convince you that this is a, a deep conjecture because during this semester you had or year you had like talks about that. But one thing is that if you have a uniform version of this conjecture, it would imply the twin prime conjecture and many, many other things in general. So my interest today really is about uh, the conjecture, which is generalizes this uh, conjecture of Chola, and this is the conjecture of Elliot, which want to replace function lambda with any bounded multiplicative function. And here, well, before I formulate what is Elliot conjecture, like I'm sure that many of you know, but let me ju let just uh, try to understand what is the natural obstruction here to generalize it. So one way this would fail if F was a, looked like a character. So because there is some periodicity here and some correlations wouldn't vanish. So of course, the other way, if you forget about even correlations, if you live with one function, so we are not necessarily even guaranteed to have the mean value to vanish. And there is a standard counterexample here is the function n to the i t. And of course, if you change uh, your function chi times n to the i t into maybe two, three primes, nothing really change. So if f is close to this, modulated and to the IT character, then you also expect non-vanishing of correlations. So in, in the past, I guess, 20 years, what became clear is that what does it mean close for a multiplicative function? So the distance that measure the closeness, how F, this is distance squared, which measure how close you are to the and to that to modulated character at point X is this strangely looking expression which if you're not used to that, well, but this is the, I'll just write it down. So that happened to be the right way to measure the distance between the two multiplicative functions. And then in this language of this distance, what the conjecture of Elliot says, the conjecture of Elliot, from 94, I guess, says the following, that if F, and in ergodic language is if F, so this is bounded multiplicative function. So if F is aperiodic, I'll use here the, what the language that ergodic theorists use, and by aperiodic function, I mean that it's far from any character times n to the i t. So in my language, this is for every t and chi, the distance between f and i t chi is infinity. And also people, some people prefer that a completely equivalent to the halash machinery just means that on every arithmetic progression, your mean value is non-zero. This is completely equivalent formulations. I mean, sorry, zero, obviously. So we have the conjecture that if F is aperiodic, then in fact, all the, I'll set it for one function, all the correlation vanish. So 
So there are, should be some conjugates sometimes you can state. Uh, so there is a general version of that, but let's stick with this for now. So uh, again, I will not be uh, trying to explain why it is important, but I will just mention that any progress towards this conjecture was completely open. And in the past, maybe, well, now already nine years or eight years, it has uh, seen progress, actually, less maybe not that much, but anyways, it, it, it's, it shows a little, it, it's seen a, a lot of progress and in particular, uh, the proof. Conjecture, rigidity theorems, a lot, a lot of things like happen there. However, this conjecture is wrong, this statement, as, as stated. So, um, and the, the way to see that this is wrong, is the what is now called the MRT class functions. That's been pointed out by Matamaki, Radzivila, and Tawa in 2015. So one way why it can fail for technical reason is that your function f can be different n to the it at different scales. So f of p can be p to the it k on the scale of sk. And then what happens is that if you look at the, so let me just do with the conjugation. If you look at this correlation, then at the scale of TK, if I take TK here, at the scale of SK, this will look like N to the ITK times N to the I times the conjugate. So it's going to be big. But if you take a very spread out scales of SK, there is not a single n to the it to which you are close. So you just keep rotating, rotating, and on different scales, you look very different. Uh, so this was a class of functions after this example. And uh, in view of the results that I will tell you about, what became clear, and I guess it's motivated by the questions in AIM workshop on the de in 2018, it was become clear that the right way to look at the Elliott's conjecture for general functions is to look on the subsequences or on the scales. So um, I will now. I'm sorry? It didn't put conjugate. There, yes. So I, as I said, I will state after that the corrected ones, this is true for all the functions for all the conjugates here. Should be also true. If you put random conjugates, conjecture, so everything should be true. Okay. So now, what has been known and what is known about this conjecture? So this is the theorem, the result, State of the art sort of is the result of Tau and Teravainen. And from 17, well, published in 18, 18. And so this result, so there are two instances where we know the conjectures. So the first one is that when k equals to 2, and what you would like to do, you would like to understand all the aperiodic functions, but you can't really. So you have to assume that F is strongly aperiodic. And a strongly aperiodic means that you take your distance, so you, you fix your favorite character chi, you take the distance to the n to the it chi. And what you want to have is you want this to be uniformly big. So you look at t up to x, and you look at some q up to q. And what you want to have is you want this to go to infinity uniform. So not only you want to be far from the every given factor uh, character, but you want to be far from every twisted and to the it very much uniform. So in this way, uh, Terry and well, first Terry proved, and then uh, second thing was with the uni. So there is a there is a scales 
set of scales such that the logarithmic density of these scales, it's a rich set. <clears throat> and on which for every shift, let me just denote it for the correlation, SF <coughs> to X goes to zero along the scales. So you have a set of the subsequence of the scales to win on which you actually go to uh, to the Chola conjecture or Elliot conjecture holds. Sorry, what's the role of Q? Um, so you can actually make it whatever it is. So this was a conductor of Q, but you can make it pretty uniform. So for every chi, I will need a more technical version after that, but for, for every chi, Q was the conductor. Okay, so this was the result of the uh, tau actually first and then on this uh, tau and uni. And uh, the second instance where we know something about the conjecture is k odd. And here I will restrict myself to only the real valued functions because that's what I will be talking after about. So I'll take a real valued functions. And uh, the again, we would like to put Elliot says that we would like to put here every aperiodic functions, but we can't. So we assume something which is F is super strong aperiodic. And what I mean here by that is that if I take for every character chi, so if I measure the distance from F. I don't no longer require the good news n to the it because f is real, so t can be only zero. But I do require the distance to be rather large or distance squared, so to be log log x. So the trivial bound on the square of the distance is two log log x. So I require f to be very far from the character. And then the conclusion is the same that there exists a set of scales uniform to which uh, on which Chola conjecture uh, area of conjecture applies. okay so this is how uh, the sort of uh, the state of the art is uh, right now and so what I mentioned right now is that so Sorry, if you, uh, let's say we are liable yeah and k is two. Then, are you, what are you stating uh, exactly? Logarithmic? No, on the left. On the left. Yes. Yeah, so I'm stating this is a, a stronger statement than the logarithmic because I know that for almost all scales, and this is really what I will use for the general Elliot. So yeah, this implies the logarithmic. For level, what would you be stating there? That's stronger than um, uh, a correlation. Uh, k equals. I would be saying that the logarithmic density of all the scales is. Uh, uh, just the full interval. Yeah. So there might be gaps like in logarithmic one that doesn't hold. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So what's this SKF? SKF, this is the K point correlation. So I will just make for myself the notation because I keep writing that. I don't want to index it with the shifts, but without logarithm. So all of these are without logarithms, but I instead add the scales. They imply logarithmic because the density is one. The insane words was not about random or duplicative function. That's so the random minus, plus minus one. So, so the random multiplicative function, this is an interesting question, actually. So for the random multiplicative function, almost surely the Chola conjecture holds that you have square root cancellation, but there is much more interesting phenomena there. And this is, um, so if the partial sums do not behave like Gaussian random variables, but the partial sums of the Chola do. So this is uh, actually, yeah. So they do behave like Gaussian random variables and you can model say Mobius Chola correlation as a Gaussian process. Okay, so, uh, Right, I guess, well, if, so basically,
basically the way you would want to see about that right now, before I state like my first result, I think the way to see the world of all multiplicative functions is that there is a chaotic multiplicative functions. And by that, I mean pretentious or pretentious. And here, in this case, if you're close to Dirichlet character, like in 2017, I worked out these correlation formulas. And, and what happens is that you have, the, for every correlation, you have an asymptotic formula, which is typically not zero. And then, so what happens, there is also the class, after that, you move to the class, which contains the MRT functions. This is sort of functions which contain MRT. I will call an MRT plus. So this is when Chola starts holding on the subsequences. But MRT plus is much richer than MRT. And then after that, there is this world of strongly. Uh, you have to go slowly. Mm -hmm. you, so uh, pretentious is something that's pretending to be that, but in some quantitative form, what is? No, I actually here mean that f n to the t chi to infinity is smaller than infinity. Just okay. literally in terms of the difference. yeah, this is a good. This is actually a very good point because we all have disagreements about that, like <laughs> here. So there is different words of what okay. people mean. Right. Yeah. Okay, so that's your notion of pretentious. Right. So uh, this is strongly aperiodic. This is whatever we start being uniformly far from the character, and super strongly. This is the world of Leo Super strongly aperiodic. This is where we require incredibly large distance to the chalk. But in general, the theory of the correlations should be, so all of these functions, all of this world is this world of aperiodic functions. And that's what we want to understand. So this is like what I want to understand right now. So here is the theorem. Also, can you shortly describe why log log x and not some other? Why distance or super? Distance is measured by log log x. Ah, uh, so why it is like log log x? So this is one minus real part of something unimodular. And so this is upper bounded, but if I, if I have twice here, so sum over primes. Okay. More dense. So this is everything is on the scale of maximum that can be square of the distance. <clears throat> okay, so I'm ready to state. So the Elliott conjecture is something about on scales, and that's what we're looking for. And so you here, don't write it. I don't write it. You can, but you cannot move it. Ah, okay. uh, you, you can, can write there, but you have to pin. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, that's true. Uh, Currently, you have two black words up. <laughs> Let's go the other way. I don't think it's the right one. This one? Yeah. Are you okay with that? Okay. I just want to make sure. Okay, cool. This is the I don't know, that one. Which one? Okay, yeah, I want also. Okay, so we can we can will kind of say Fine. Theorem. <laughs> theorem. So this is the theorem of myself, Sasha Manjarel, and Yoni Teravainen from, from today. I guess what well, should appear on the class next morning. Um, <laughs> so, well, Simple, I'll state it for one function as well. So let's take f k equals two. So now the LF conjecture asks us to put a periodic, and I will put f is a periodic, so no assumptions. <laughs> then there exists a sequence of scales. such that the logarithmic, and here is the difference that this is upper logarithmic density, full upper logarithmic density, such that the Chola conjecture, the earlier holds. And on this case. So this is sort of closes this gap whatever uh, we ask for. Okay, and 
So everything that I'm stating here is also valid for F1 and F2. If you have two functions, you put a conjugate there. Uh, what is this plus one? Sorry? What is this plus? One? So this is upper logarithmic density. So this means that here there is a density in the result of tau and uni, and here there, there might be. And uh, okay, since you asked already, so let me just in, before step in second part, I say that this is sharp. This is sharp. In which sense? Like this is sharp in the sense. So this, you can tune the MRT examples such that there exists a function f uh, complex value. So I would say f is complex value. So there is a function f complex value such that these correlations with the conjugates. A uniform obey for x in the scales kappa with double log log density. So what I mean is that there is a double logarithmic upper density scales on which you get extremely large. And that immediately means that I, can, I could not here relax the condition to density and not even to log log density. Because occasionally I can be very, very large. And that is a period. Sorry? And the function is a period. And the function is a period. And this one is a period. Ah, by the way. This is a good uh, point as well. This is a periodic functions and actually due to the result of last week of, I guess, Nikos and uh, that because you know that MRT plus functions is a period. Cool. Yeah, okay. So now the... So, so this result applies to the class of MRT functions? To, uh, so this result implies to the class of the entire result? Yes, of course. Yeah. But on the MRT functions, you know a little more. I will tell you about that. So k equals to three. Let me state the theorem for k equals to k odd f real value. We have result for roots of unity as well, but I will just to simplify real value. Um, and again, you would want to put f before it was super strongly aperiodic, you have to be extremely far from the wheel. Now F is just aperiodic. That's what we want. And the same conclusion holds. So SKF goes to zero on a set of subscales. But now the upper logarithmic, double logarithmic density of the scales is. So there is a full set in any, but for applications, or you can't get to primes anyways, for applications I'm gonna be talking about, double, triple, quadruple logarithmic, anything, anything which is full is okay. You went away from primes, long time ago. Yes, exactly. I didn't even answer it there. I picked it up. <laughs> uh, right, right. Okay, so this is first theorem, well, I guess main theorem that I'll talk about. Yes. I have a trivial question. Is yeah. e plus log log of some symbol equals what? This? What is that symbol? Is that it changes it changes the meaning. And it looks like chi. Yes, I, I think I should it's be not quite chi or this is chi. But it's not the uh, chi. Mass chi. Chi, chi is a subset of natural numbers. Uh, chi is a subset. This is chi is a subset of natural. Not the character. Yeah. It's a very bad notation. I know. <laughs> I chose. <laughs> okay. So is all this telling you that some sort of yeah, average? Yeah, average yeah, yeah, yeah. This is not. The, this is a natural average, as natural as you can take. But I mean, you would want to say that there is some smooth average, but this is not true because of this upper logarithmic density, which is needed. So there might be some very long intervals on which you are actually get very big, but there are for sure intervals on which you are very very small, very long. So it's not quite logarithmic or something like that. But even with more smoothing, you can't get it to the zero. Uh, uh, 
maybe, but I, I mean, you would have to. No, I cannot. I, I cannot give any smooth result. We, we haven't. Yeah, I mean, I would do Okay, so I guess I want to show you some applications of this. What what becomes different in this world right now, and then talk a little bit about the proof. So the applications. The first application, well, this is related to sign patterns. So the sign patterns, I'm going to fix the completely multiplicative function. Now it's completely multiplicative with plus minus one. And uh, Lamer, both of them actually, about 100 years ago, and uh, they conjectured actually or noticed and should prove that there, is, there are two functions. There exist two functions that avoid consecutive. Well, how many lemurs? There are three lemurs. So uh, this which, is Emma Lamer. Yeah, there's DHL Lamer and DN Lamer. Uh, so this is DM, I think. I think this is DH. M was for sure one of them. Right. Okay. So, How is that possible 100 years ago? Well, 100 years. So I think I even met them. So it's <laughs> 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 Now she's making the point that it's she has to be very young to do it. Yeah, my, my. Uh, well, she noticed. Like, sure, sure was the result in around. Probably 30, something like 40. Yeah, maybe 30. 40 sure already was dead. So maybe 30. So that's a good qu good question. I don't remember. Actually. So uh, I mean, your 100 years is but exactly. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> okay. So Lamer, yeah, maybe. So there are two functions that avoid. Well, I don't even know when he did the coloring, but, but around around that. Well, that that'd be coloring. Coloring was in 1970. <laughs> 1917. Okay, so but this is related to coloring. So yes, it is. Well, this is a monochromatic. So this is two functions that avoid the sign two monochromatic pluses concept. So these are two functions that there are completely multiplicative functions that avoid consecutive consecutive sorry three pluses. So there are two exact two functions that. And they look the following way. Let me just show you. So they look awfully like a Dirichlet character. Except that you are not allowed to put, of course, zero here. So you put plus or minus one. And that's how you get to. And you avoid completely sure, completely classified. Them. OK, well, then. This I know the dates. So this was in 60s. So in 60 wills, he wrote, he ran the computations. And uh, well, in 74, Hudson conjectured. So based these computations were run before. But once you take uh, the same phenomena when you avoid four consecutive pluses. So what he conjectured is that there are there exist 13 functions extra to those two. So 13 functions that take three sign patterns plus 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 monochromatic three pluses and do not take the fourth one. So and they all look the following way. So what well, I will say that this is f p plus minus one. So they're modified character in the same way where p is 5, 7, 11, 13, and suddenly 53. Um, and so this is already 10 functions. And then there was one function, two functions that mimic character mod 4. So this is something that looks character mod 4. And on, on prime 2, as plus minus one, say so minus two. So two functions extra that, and one function here, and the last function which mimics 
the character trivial character. So this is g of p is one for all p except two and at two minus. Okay, so this is 13 functions that uh, are there. Sorry, what is f sub five? Uh, this is three. No, no, I know. You're saying f sub p? This f, where is it? Ah, this is f sub p. So they look like f sub p with the characters of conductor. This is a characters mod uh, 5, 7, 11, 13, 53 modified. There's only one. There is only one primitive Jerusalem territory. <laughs> Quite right. Okay. Minus G2 2. Sorry? Yeah, plus minus. Yeah. Will tell us what is special about 50. Uh, computation. So, Wills actually wrote it. I mean, they were trying to improve the constant in Burgess bounds. And so that's when you want to understand the characters. This is like characters that have like four consecutive, uh, do not have four consecutive residues. And that's what he was doing to try to improve this constant. He ran the computation. I don't know actually the logic, like what, why here is because if you write in stupidly, you have to go quite far. So nothing special, it just comes out uh, from theorem. Well, okay, our theorem. Uh, conjecture is true. Conjecture is true. So indeed, there is exactly 13, which are they, this one, which you can actually prove that they exactly. So you don't know the, uh, if we go back to, I mean, I don't know all these fancy guys, but uh, you can do k equals two, and you can do k odd, say for label. You're managing to get by here with four, uh, four, these configurations of length four, but by knowing only a few moments, is that correct? Yeah, so, but one, one, yes, exactly. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I do need, okay. right, right. And it, it is crucial, it is a very good point, and this is crucial here to know the th third point correlation for everything, which you didn't know before. Right, so there's the odd. Yeah, yeah. yeah. conjecture like this for an arbitrary case, which for the, for the it's a very good or the finite demanding functions. Right. So this is a very good. Uh, it hasn't been written. It was already difficult to write this. But indeed, what you can do is you what what you can do if you assume right now the conjecture that I wanted to state and forgot. So uh, <laughs> the conjecture, the modified Elliot conjecture. So if you assume that and run through our machinery to prove that, you will be able to prove that there is a finite number of lists, assuming, assuming the Alice conjecture or modified Alice conjecture. How does the yeah. size of the list grow? grow with the I have no idea, I haven't checked, but I think it grows. Anyway, yeah. that, uh, just to get back to what your theorem, you, you somehow uh, crossing this bridge with- Yeah, the so the inside. limit, exactly. So uh, yeah, I will try to, actually I don't know, but I will try to explain that. So the key idea is the following. You will be able to get to prove that the fourth point correlation is three point correlations vanish and four point correlations bound by the way. Didn't uh, Maya or Adolf and Maya, one of the two did three, right? Four configurations of three. Of length three. three, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Element yeah. error. Exactly. You can, you can do all of them, but it's combinatorics becomes quite difficult. So even to pass, yes. <clears throat> there, exactly. Who was it, Maya? I think it was Maya, yes. Was Meyer and uh, so this also appeared in the yeah okay uh, yeah, okay so this is the first new case good yeah, yeah this is the first new case I think this is a formal sort of okay conjecture is true like how I'm doing okay fine um, so here is okay I'll I'll try to cut it like then the second application is this is going to be put on the lockup tonight yes okay. I mean the archive said yes. <laughs> but I uh, maybe if it wasn't treated like the Riemann hypothesis proof or something. <laughs> now you can put it on. There are many of them. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I would have nobody's monitoring that. I know that because I get them all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, application two. So the application two is the question. Like I'll, in general, yeah. So application two very much inspired. It's a question in a workshop in 18. So it's questions from both ergodic theoretic to a point of view and from, uh, 
from number theoretic. So we are trying to prove a fun that Liouville function satisfies the Chola conjecture. But the question that was raised from both the ergodic theoretic perspective and from that, but do we actually have functions to which we can prove the Chola conjecture that look like plus minus one? And that actually, surprisingly, so here is the question by Thierry de Roy, uh, to formalize it. So suppose I'm giving you a set of integers. And well, let's take it not too thin because it's going to be uh, stupid. So let's take it pretty thick. And let's define the analog of, let's call this set A. And let's define uh, the analog of the Liouville function or the uh, related to this set as minus one to the power of the number of j's such that aj divides that. You can take it with multiplicity or without multiplicity, it doesn't really matter. So if uh, this is a set of primes, you get your Liouville function if you count the multiplicity. So the question was very simple. Can we construct Liouville function for which you can prove Chola for all the things? And that's also a related, or in other words, can you construct the functions with the Fustenberg system, a product of Bernoulli and Mirsky measure, like if you twist it by Mirsky. Is this explicitly you mean? Explicitly. Explicitly, not the random construction, indeed. The random multiplicative almost surely will satisfy it. Uh, somebody, <laughs> the Riemann hypothesis for random multiplicative function. That's it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is, uh, that is, not, okay, here is the theorem. Wait, is this even multiplicative or? It is. It is. Let's see. But say you have a has six and some other things. No, but you just count the number of like say without you you count the number of uh, things that are the the a j is an infinite set there. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's an infinite set. So here is the theorem, which also follows from the technology. So the theorem is that. Let's take a set of primes, subset of primes, any subset of primes with the relative density zero inside primes. And let's build up our function based on, uh, I choose letters that I don't know how to write actually. But so this is minus one to the either if you want to count with multiplicity of the divisors or if you want to look at the Liouville type function, count the number of primes that divide n with, without multiplicity, then Elliot holds. So Elliot holds for f. Here. So for entire class of these functions, as soon as you have density zero in the primes, you can prove all, not just even all, all correlations vanish. So this is also the consequence of okay. Ah, fantastic. I, of course, I'm assuming this is a very good point. So I do want, of course, one over p when p is. I want this to be infinity as an example there. So some would think you can make sure. Okay. So uh, I guess let me state a conjecture that I forgot to state, and then I will move and tell you a little bit about the proof. <clears throat> So these examples, as I said, I, I won't have time really to, to talk about it right now, but they also give you examples of with different Fustenberg system. You can multiply it by a different example of Fustenberg system. You can produce these examples that come from ergodic theory, where you have a product of Bernoulli shift and, and something interesting. Um, so I wanted to state the conjecture that I forgot to state. 
and this is our conjecture, which which is actually the corrected form of Elliot. So when you say you get a product of the only times, I guess a characteristic factor with the that's because you're allowing. Uh, why would you get a uh, something? So you would get like something. Uh, what I what I meant here is that so there there is a conjecture of like how uh, Fustenberg system like of minus one zero and one. It's only for the real one. So I don't touch this. Uh, I don't. Uh, but yeah, I'm surprised that you're getting some. Yeah, because the actually, uh, where's the correlation? The with no, for this one will be Bernoulli. Yeah, okay. It's, it's going to be Bernoulli. Ah, okay. Yeah, for this one, it's for this one. No, no, if you multiply, you get the, you get the no. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you multiply by the pretentious part, you can like uh, the pretentious. Yeah. The pretentious and pretentious are very well understood as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so <laughs> here, here is the conjecture that we had. We invented the word pretentious. Granville? Uh, yeah. Granville sound. Yes. Granville sound. Yes. Uh, okay. So, so here is the conjecture. I will state it in general form. So suppose that one of k are uh, complex valued functions such that at least one of them, f1 is a periodic. I could formulate my results also for our results for several functions. So suppose one of them is aperiodic, then there exists a sequence of scales of upper logarithmic density of one, such that uniformly for all shifts, Along the subsequence, the correlation vanish. And this conjecture, so the tau version of Matamaker as the tau Elliot conjecture implies this. So we can prove. Combining the proof of what I'm going to be talking about right now in their conjecture, you can deduce this conjecture. But this is really the right approach to if you want to think about all of them. So it is implied by whatever is believed to be true. Okay, I guess I better move and tell you something about the proofs. Um, so here is the idea, so the proofs. Um, so really, I'll talk probably about first K equals to two, and probably I won't have much time afterwards, but... Um, so the main idea, what is new in this proof, is really what you interplay to understand the interplay between between the scales. Right. The yes. theorem on the top board on the right, bottom. This one. No, sorry, middle, middle, this. middle right. Middle, middle. Ah, middle. I don't see any k odd or even or that. There is no. So that's entire all chalk. So that. So that's. Uh, not using all this recent, uh, it makes use of this uh, k equals two and k odd. Yeah, this is makes use of our proof of whatever I've been talking about right now, but it doesn't it use. Does not use. No, it uses in, entirely whatever is inside, doesn't use the, uh, it's entirely what is used in our part, but not what is relied on the power. Well, is that sort of in the Halash kind of world, that theorem? Yes. This theorem is on the border, actually. Exactly. So the whole point is to get. Does it even use uh, Matomaki? Yeah. No. For example. Yeah. So I was just yeah. want to clarify that. Yeah. No. The different theorems using different. So when you're giving the ideas, k equals two, you very much need Matomaki reasonable. Yeah. 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 And and three uh, three as well. So whatever I will be talking about is right now the proof not of this theorem but the main yeah. theorem about correlation. I'm just distinguishing. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. Different theorems. Right. 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 So this is this is not a, this is byproduct. Actually, this is a byproduct of the proof of what, okay. what will appear right now. <clears throat> yeah. So here is the ideas of the proof. So I guess, uh, as I said, this is what you you might call uh, what is 
I, I'll try to formulate instead of going through the entire proof, three things that are sort of new, like what makes it possible to bridge this gap. And uh, really the main thing is, is something like interplay between the scales or induction on scales, if you want. So remember that this, the tau teravitamin theorem says that if we have, I will just remind you what is strongly a periodic condition. So this is you, if you have the infimum. So under this condition, you do know that if this, if this goes to infinity uniformly, then you know how to prove your theorem using the machinery there. So therefore, if you think what is the negation to that, you would think that sufficiently often, perhaps what happens is that at the distance to f to some character, times n to the it, maybe many, many different characters become small. So the first step in all of this is to try to control correlations to see where we can control correlations using the distance function. And here I will, okay, I'll again state it for one function. So suppose I'm given A and I'm given my favorite n to the t, given my favorite chi. Then what I claim is that I can control a K point correlation by the following thing. So I'll, I'm gonna give myself an epsilon and this is where gonna be exactly the key, the uniformity and let an epsilon to go with access to zero. This is the key for to mention, but it is controlled by something like the following. It is controlled by some constant, but the key thing is controlled by the distance from F to N to the IT chi. And now this is truncate, truncated distance. This is only the distance between X to the epsilon and X. So this is the primes I take to into account only the primes between X to the epsilon and X. And of course, now there is something else. So if distance is small, we are, we are lucky, but uh, you don't wanna have to be too pretentious. You don't wanna have to be too close to N to the IT chi. So the second part, It's controlled by what happens on the first primes. And they're also controlled some trivial error there. So what does it mean? It really means that whenever this distance is very, very small, when there is a small number, this distance between F and chi on the large primes is small, and F is far from character, then everything here would go to zero and we would be in business. <clears throat> so this is step one to locate, let me state. Oops. Okay, maybe I'll step state here. So what is the step two? Exponential minus one to something. Correct. This is exponential minus d squared f, and, and this is exponential minus k squared, where k is the number of correlations. That's inside the other exponent. Yes. Yeah. Well, are you, is there a parentheses in the, the second line? The second line. That's a third term. Here, oops. Yeah, well, this is this and this. Yeah. That's what you meant? Sure. Yeah. Another term. Right. Okay, so step two. Now, the point is uh, of this is that if we can locate that the distance, this kind of a lot of these scales where this distance becomes small, then uh, we would be in business. But for this, what you need to do is you need to, to see how the distance changes from scale to scale. Step one uses the entropy decrement? No, this is entropy free. This is uses uh, only the Correlation, you are in the Halash work in some theory, fundamental lemma of theory. 
So approximation of, and, and uh, so this is, but the key thing here is to put here X to the epsilon, really. So I will come back, unfortunately, I'm running out of time. So I want to tell you a bit more, but I can comment on what is actually used there. It is entropy decrement free. Yeah. But now, so the second bit is that you want to control the distance to locate this when on different scales, you want to control the distance on different scales. So here is an iterative lemma, which actually, which is very important. So suppose I'm giving myself a function which will control the distance on different scales. So this function is up to, say, doesn't grow too fast. <clears throat> Shouldn't grow too slowly, but doesn't matter. And suppose that I have the sequence of scales, which also doesn't grow too fast. So it grows. But doesn't grow too fast. Something let's say log of sub four. This is sub four. It looked like the left hand side was bigger than the right. So it's log, 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 log. Yeah. Log, 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 log. Doesn't matter. Okay. 10, 100 logs. The main important thing I'm not too slow. <laughs> Uh, so, and suppose that there is a character. So at each of this scale, I have a character and I have T, which controls such that the distance. So suppose that there is T K and chi K. So T K is, you can allow it to be quite big. And uh, the conductor of K, the modulus of K, you also need the uniformity. So you can also allow it to be quite big. And suppose that your distance at this scale is controlled by your function f of xk. So it can be different characters, different scales. So what the, uh, this lemma says is that then you can glue these scales together. And there is one t, and there is one chi, such that the distance from f to this n to the it chi for every x large is controlled by this function f of x for every large x. So if on many scales you have, if you have, if they are not too spread out then control, local control means the global control. Okay, so I will tell you, since I'm running out of time, I will tell you just the third ingredient, the last one, and stop here. And then maybe take a question. So finally, this is entropy free. The previous one is entropy free. I mean, the step three is entropy not free. So this is so step three. So this is really a tuned version of the result of Tao and Teravai. And then so you cannot immediately the problem of using this. Uh, uniform bound that if you have the uniformly uh, large strongly pretentious, then all good. So since we are trying to connect all the scales together, we need the scaled version for that. So you can go through the proof and you only gave a very good lecture here for two hours, but you can go and adjust to prove the following. So, okay, so since if you have say F1 and F2, let me state already. Uh, let me do with one function. So if you have f and you have a function a, which grows to infinity, and suppose that you have a system of scales. Now you don't have uniformly large distance, but suppose you have a system of scales on which your distance is large. So in this a over here, that scales also? Is that a? Over here, there's a capital A also. 
Is that a superscript? Or no, this is like another A, which will come from this A, but you can think of that as non-related. It's a power. It's a power. It's an arbitrary large power. So if you have a system of scales on which your distance is large uniformly, so you allow yourself in FEMUM, you allow yourself to vary T and to vary Q, If you have this system of scales, then okay, so I'll state it like in the form of tau. So then actually along these scales, if you look at the correlations, You can even put the maximum here over H1, H2, but let's, let's not. Um, yeah, so that. <clears throat> So what I mean by that is that if there is there is on logarithmic there is logarithmically many correlations which vanish along the x when x goes along the sequence. So the, if there is a sequence of scales, then you can prove that along the sequence of scales using the couple and tau's inequality, and you can prove that the, there is a large set logarithmic because a large set of correlations that, that vanish. Now, let me just, in, well, I, I guess I ran out of time, but if you put this together, the whole interplay of this induction is that if you have this set is rich, then the large distance it propagates. So it, it actually takes over. And so you can, you have a lot of time when this happens. If this set is thin, then you can, very often you are smaller than A, and so then you can locate these scales and so on and so forth. But the key thing is uniformity. Everything there has to be matched up. I guess I'll stop here. And uh, yeah, thank you. Any more uh, questions? Can you say something about step two? In particular, I'm not entirely sure I understand what it says there. So, right. So, what it says there is the following. So suppose I have a function, I have a system of scales. And they grow at most polynomially. At most polynomially. And A, you would want to let it, yeah, doesn't matter. But, it, but A is fixed for this. A uh, will depend on X too, actually. But you can think of that as fixed. You, it's, it, it, you can think of that as fixed. After that, we will be doing like, uh, but you can think. X, like. Uh, there is. I don't understand that. The, there is a function. So here is A, A right now doesn't depend. A is fixed. A is fixed. So A is fixed. For every, I have a function that for every x, let's say natural number. So this is just a function. Exist, where is the, the exist an A such that? Where is the A? Come? Yeah, so there exists, suppose that there exists an A so, and the system of scales such that. Yeah. There exist T and K such that this at these scales, yeah. my F controls the distance. Okay. Then there exists a global T yeah. independent of the scales. There is a global chi such that starting from some point, my F also control distance uniformly. So here the key is the characters are different and DK are different. So how do you do that? So what's the, what's, yeah. What's the content? So the content is that um, the triangle inequality really. So it is a triangle inequality from, from the business says that actually distance is a slowly varying function. So basically if 
D, so let me just say the following. If D polynomially or something. Yeah, this is this is something like that. So basically, if if you had a scale on which this is small and this is small, you can use triangle inequality on two scales, remove that. And then you will know something about the interpend zero free regions on the character will tell you that you can't really have a uh, very small. Yeah, this is something like a zero repulsion phenomenon for different families of functions. But induction is easier to do that. Um, you mentioned Wolves or somebody making that conjecture in connection with Burgess bound. What was he trying to do? Give a Burgess bound directly on a multiplicative function without a conductor? What was so I think what he is, is, is when they were trying to, so I didn't read the original paper. This is what is mentioned in Hudson's paper. But so what he, they were probably trying to do is to just optimize the constant. And so they wanted to find these small characters that do not take, if you don't take four values, one, one, one. I would just mean a short character sum. Short character sum, but they wanted to treat it as a multiplicative function, and and then you want to do some combinatorics. You okay. and then you want to use the multiplicativity. Yeah, just mm -hmm. yeah, just using multiplicativity to gain some log. Exactly. Something. Even even constant. Even constant. I think just constant. Work. And he got down to four being important, or he just numerically checked four and stopped. I mean, you you seem to be in a position where you're just proving his only conjecture thing, huh? Uh well, yeah, he, he stated he just stated for four. Uh, Wills just computed it. Hudson stated it for four because he didn't even care about it. He just cared about the, the pattern, uh, you know, the coloring pattern doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. For four. For four. Only for four. He did it because to compute for five, I think, was already there. Okay. Okay. I'm just trying to understand where that's coming from. Yeah. So it's coming from that they were doing some combinatorics, finite combinatorics on the sign patterns and trying to squeeze in something from that. Yeah. You said that the sure is sure coloring thing relates to. I don't see the connection. I don't see either. So I think <laughs> I think I think that this is just uh, a point that uh, this is a multiplicative coloring. It, it's not a coloring coloring per se that relates to that, but it's just the version of multiplicative coloring and finding the monochromatic three things in one <clears throat> three consecutive things. So there is no direct connection. It's just that he was interested both in coloring and multiplicative. But not do you think in principle that there could be a purely combinatorial proof that there are finally many uh, multiplicative functions that don't have the x plus 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 pattern uh, without so we're not characterizing them precisely just I would be I would be very <laughs> I would be very uh, happy to see that <laughs> even for the OV. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, so uh, basically, you prove, let's say, Chala with the, let's say, plus minus one multiplicative distance infinite. Mm -hmm. uh, when the distance is what? Smaller than log log? Guess that? This is, yeah. So basically, this is, this is a very, very good, good point. So this is where you, if this is what you're asking. So yes, the answer is yes. And we prove Chala for all. For all shifts. So there is a class of functions. Right. So what is the restriction? Exactly. So something which we call moderately pretentious. <laughs> uh, if you were missing one more name. So moderately pretentious. British. Uh, British. It's a joint effort of Finnish, British, and Canadian. <laughs> but moderately pretentious functions, those are the ones that actually touch strong by periodic functions as well. So what are those functions? Those are functions for which um, the distance, so you take the distance to enter the IT type, and it's uniformly, say up to X and up to Q's log X. This is little law of log X, so limit. Is zero. So in particularly, so for such functions, you can prove Chola on all shifts, on all uh, on all of all orders for subsequence. Right. So for this, you have to use uh, uh, no entropy. 
No, no entropy. No, it's completely. It's so that's, it's that's, that's it. No, no, and this is very but interesting. Yeah. So by our own hands with this, it's uh, it's actually independent, which is which is interesting because this is the word. This type of functions they touch the word of strongly pretentious functions. Yeah. But strongly non-pretentious. Soluble is just uh, log log. Yes. Not very far. Not very far. <laughs> so, but still. Yeah. There is hope just from this mod. I would hope I would talk about something else now if I <laughs> saw the better, but oh, okay. The the large primes for now, the large primes come from the entropy decrement. So we go to the primes after the epsilons, and that's where you, you push it. But the large primes right now, the way we know how to treat on the way is to treat it from entropy okay. arguments. Uh, but I yeah, we'll see. But this here, Chola holds before we only knew MRT fun functions where you could prove Chola on subsequence. This is the entire class of functions where you can. Yeah. I'm not sure if it's interesting, but can you construct functions with hybrid Chola? So satisfy two point Chola, but not three point Chola? <laughs> Stuff like this. It sounds like an encoding theory question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mixing in as a implied three. Yeah. But it it is actually yeah. it, it is actually a very good question. So for instance, even yeah, even the MRT remove the subsequence, it becomes a periodic from two point Chola, and then expect the But he, he probably wants not on the subsequence. He wants this in time. You then the MRT two point Chola, then you will have to be a periodic. But it doesn't mean so MRT, for instance, functions because yes. they, they can. Now you talk about subsequence. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the answer is uh, the, in general, yes. Yeah, so you can you, you even MRT type functions. So there are correlations which vanish. They're the three point ones. But the two point ones uh, origin, uh, occasionally you get very, very big. So really, the right way to formulate the Chola, the Elliot conjecture for this, if you take account of conjugation, is to formulate it for rational functions. So when you have a degree of the denominator and the numerator is the same, then you might have MRT type examples. If they are different, then you uh, vanish the correlation should go to zero. <laughs> okay. Any more questions? Thank the speaker again.